الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا First and foremost my beloved brothers and sisters I just want to take a moment out to thank the administration of the masjid May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of them for hosting this program and of course our Sheikh Sheikh Nadim who coordinated with the brothers in making this happen. My beloved brothers and sisters, the second point that I want to mention is, and I think this is very, very important, and I've been saying this in a lot of these programs that I have been delivering here in the in Canada. I, Abu Taymiyyah, I'm not a hate preacher. I do not incite violence. I am not anti-Semitic. Is that clear? I, Abu Taymiyyah, only quote the scripture. I'll make that very, very clear. I do not incite hatred towards any minority group or any religion or anyone, whoever it might be. I'm only here to enlighten my beloved brothers and sisters about what their religion has to say, quoting the scripture. And as long as you quote the scripture, just go and ask your lawyers, guys. No issues can come your way. As much as they might try, and the enemies of Islam, they will always look to prevent good materializing. As they have tried to do. Right? Using fear-mongering tactics to stop these programs from happening. I honestly thought that Canadians were very, very soft. But even with all of these bombardments and these emails and whatever have you right, not a single organization budged. Not a single organization, right, bent over to some of these four fear-mongering tactics that were being used. Does that make sense? If every time we were bombarded, right, with negative messages and then we bent over or we submitted to whatever was being asked of us, wallahi, we would never be able to spread any good. The enemies of Islam, of course, they don't want to see a crowd like this. Muslims coming out to benefit and better their understanding in their religion, of course they don't want to see that. Right? So I just want to honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank Masjid Abu Bakr, right, for allowing this program to go ahead. And also, how can I be anti-Semitic? And my father-in-law is actually Jewish. For those who don't know. Huh? How can I? Whenever he comes over to the UK, I take good care of him. It puts the hole in my pocket because I spend everything that I have on him. I take him to the most expensive and luxurious of restaurants. So when he does end up going back to France, he knows that his Muslim son-in-law took good care of him. Right? I'm a compassionate Imam, guys. Even though I might discuss some very controversial, pressing issues online that you guys may have come across, Alhamdulillah, not a single video of mine has been taken down. Not a single YouTube video has been taken down simply because always at the beginning we put these disclaimers. Like this one. And as long as you quote the scripture, my brothers and my sisters, as long as you quote the scripture and you say the Quran says this, nobody can get you into trouble. I actually took a lot of my inspiration from a devout Christian Catholic. Have you guys heard of Pierce Morgan? Everyone knows Pierce Morgan, right? Pierce Morgan once upon a time was hosting a very well-known show called The Good Morning Show in the UK. He invited over, have you guys heard of Boris Johnson? Home Prime Minister, right? He invited over one of Boris Johnson's right-hand men. He invited him over. His name is Jacob Rees-Mogg. He's in Parliament. He's a Conservative MP. And he kept on asking him, what is your position on same-sex marriages? This white Christian Catholic every single time would say according to the teachings of the church every time he would say this 
according to the teachings of the church, he would respond like this. Every time he pressed the question. And then the third time he said to him, but what do you think? He goes, it doesn't matter what I think. According to the teachings of the church, this is not how you structure your life. Right? Fear mongering tactics have been used in order to quieten us down at the expense of our children being misled and walking away with misinformation, fake news. Anyways, this is just a muqaddima. Last point that I want to mention before I start my lecture, my brothers and my sisters. Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah Azza wa Jal. At a lot of our events in the UK and outside of the UK and likewise here in Canada, we have been getting brothers and sisters attending from different walks of life. Brothers and sisters who might not necessarily be practicing, brothers and sisters who barely ever go to the masjid. I think it's important that I keep mentioning this at every single masjid, right? Today you may come to the masjid and you are a regular. You always come to the masjid. However, you see someone who doesn't really fit, right? What you are used to seeing, what you are accustomed to seeing when you normally come to an Islamic event. A brother's hairstyle may be a certain way, right? He looks very similar to a rapper. Or a sister might not necessarily be wearing the Islamic dress code that you, my sister, is used to seeing normally when you come to the masjid, right? Please, my brothers and sisters, don't start staring down at them. Don't start making them feel uncomfortable. Don't make them feel as if they are not worthy of being in the masjid. The masjid doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to the imam. It doesn't belong to the trustees. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The mosques, they belong to Allah. Everyone comes to these events. I believe that there is some goodness in his heart. We know what a lot of Muslims and non-Muslims are doing every night. But they came to attend to sit in front of this controversial conservative individual to better their understanding of the deen. They want to know what they need to do. They're not here to walk away with a watered down understanding of their deen. Right? The other day in Khalid bin Walid, after the program, my brothers and my sisters, right, Sheikh Ahmed Oror, he brought a brother, right, into the car. And he said he really needs to talk to you about something important. This brother, right, this brother, he told us that when he was sitting in the masjid, he saw in the gathering brothers who would buy pills of him. He got them hooked onto pills and he ruined their lives. And he said, Wallahi, it is a huge burden on my shoulder. And as we were speaking, his eyes started getting watery and then broke down. These are the kind of people that are coming to the masjid. A sister messaged not so long ago saying that Friday night she was in the club, Saturday evening she was attending my program. We were in Montreal the other day. After the program, four sisters came up to us. Three sisters were wearing hijab, one of them wasn't. Right? And she said to us, her mother doesn't allow her to wear hijab. What advice can I give her? Imagine now, her mother doesn't allow her to wear hijab, but she came, right, to attend this program in the university to better her understanding of the deen. And she started getting very emotional, brothers and sisters. Be careful how you treat the people. Don't make them feel as if they don't or they are not worthy of sitting here in the masjid. Does that make sense? Everyone is welcome. Our gatherings are gatherings that are non-judgmental. Inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters, today I'm going to try and cover a range of topics as I'm aware of the different challenges that our communities face here in Toronto. What I want to discuss, my beloved brothers and sisters, 
is three causes of deviances. Why an individual may end up going astray, right? What we need to understand, my brothers and my sisters, is that the devil, the devil, is on a mission to misguide every single one of us. And he took an oath, right? He swore by Allah's might, I'm going to mislead and misguide every single one of them. Also, Allah Azza wa Jal quoted him to have said, And he's going to come from the front. He's going to come from the left, from the right, and also from the back. What does that mean? When we understand the Quran, my brothers and my sisters, we can't just go off with whatever understanding we want. We go back to whose understanding? The companions. We have the Quran and the Sunnah and not my understanding but the understanding of Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Atba'u Tabi'een who had the best type of understanding. This is how we study our religion alongside of course the great understanding of the four great Imams Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, right? I'd rather take their understanding than the understanding of someone that is contemporary. Right? Sometimes we have a fiqh issue. And then someone says to me, Oh, but this sheikh said this. Tayyip, what about the sheikh said that at the earlier times? Aren't their understanding better than maybe someone who's contemporary? I'd prefer that. A shahid min al kalam. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. What was his relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Huh? He was his cousin, Ahsent, Jazakallah Khair. He commented on this and he said, the shaitan, the devil coming from the front, it means, أُشَكِّكُهُمْ فِي أَخِرَتِهِمْ I'm going to give them doubts about the hereafter. Him coming from the left means, أُرَغِّبُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا Right? He will cause one now to be trapped in this beautiful lie. What is this beautiful light, this dunya, my brothers and my sisters? No one is saying that you can't take from the dunya. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Don't forget your fair share of this world. Ibn Kathir says, مِنَ الْمَأْكُولَاتِ وَالْمَشْرُوبَاتِ وَالْأُمُورِ الْمُبَاحَةِ Food, drink, and the things that are permissible. You want to have Timortans? Go have Timortans. But I, up until now, I don't see what the Canadians see in Timortans. Right? Go enjoy it. Islam, the Quran doesn't say that you can't enjoy yourself. Eat, drink. I think in Urdu they say, Pet ki kushkaro. Sahih? Pet ko kushkaro. I'm trying. Right? Make your stomachs happy. Ma fi ishkal. You are allowed to enjoy yourself. Take from the dunya that which is going to aid and assist you in your hereafter. However, this beautiful lie, my brothers and my sisters, is what has trapped many. We think that this is the way forward, right? Whenever an Islamic speaker comes and he talks to you about this beautiful lie, you think he's backwards, right? He's stopping me from enjoying my life. Look at all of these rappers and these trappers. These drug dealers who are living life, right? These celebrities that we look up to. When we follow them on Instagram and all of these other social media apps, perhaps maybe one day I'm going to be like him. Right? Have you guys heard of Jim Carrey? Marshall, everyone said yes. Because he's Canadian, huh? Canadian slash American slash comedian slash actor. He says something very profound. You know what's sad, guys? I quote Jim Carrey. Everyone's like, wow. If I was to quote Allah and his messenger, yeah, you know. Sallallahu Rabbi wa salam Jim Carrey said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they dreamt of so that they can realize that it's simply not the answer. Let me share something else with you guys. Have you heard of Tom Holland? Who's Tom Holland? 
Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man, my brothers and my sisters, him reflecting on his own life and also his alcohol addiction and why he felt enslaved, my brothers and my sisters. He felt enslaved to his alcohol addiction. He started opening up about what pushed him to lead a sober life and how he felt enslaved to alcohol at one point. He said to all my brothers and my sisters, I was definitely addicted to alcohol. I'm not shying away from that at all. He added, it's interesting. I didn't just one day wake up and say, I'm going to give up drinking. I just like many Brits had a very, very boozy December. I've always been able to drink a lot. And it just goes on and on and on and on. Right. Today, in one of the programs that we delivered after Dhuhr, we started speaking a little bit about these celebrities and these footballers. Did anyone come across that interview of Delhi Ali? Huh? You guys are soccer fans, huh? Delhi Ali, who one day, my brothers and my sisters, or once upon a time, he had the world at his feet. He had the world at his feet, guys. Two brothers said it to me, right? I'll read that what one of the brothers said. Huh? It's from Ireland. He said to me the following. Exactly what you talk about, Sheikh. Depression, hope. You use this in one of your lectures. Salam alaikum. He sent it to me at 5 a.m. in the morning. Jesse Lingard, likewise, who once upon a time played for Manchester United. We all want to be a Manchester United player, right? Huh? That will give me a happy, satisfying life. This is what we think, brothers and sisters. Huh? Some of these singers, some of these entertainers, some of these Instagram influencers, these drug dealers and whatever have you. Huh? These are the people that we look up to. That beautiful lie that they have been sold. Ali ibn, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu would say to the dunya, speaking to it, Ghurri ghayri, go and deceive other than me. Qad talaqtuki thalathan la raja'ata fiha. I've divorced you three times. Ali ibn Abi Talib is saying this to the dunya. I've divorced you three times. After a man divorces a woman three times, can he take her back? Up until she gets married and then divorced again, right? When she gets married, consummates the marriage, gets the only then he can take her back. Long process. Forget about her, my friend. Mm -hmm. He said this to the dunya. I've divorced you three times. No way of me taking you back. Because they realized they were smart and intelligent enough, my brothers and my sisters, that this dunya, the glitters and the glamours of this world, wallahi ladhi la ilaha ghayruh, it will not give you that satisfaction we speak to drug dealers all the time i engage with them i engage with multi-millionaires people who have it all at the same time they're sitting there sobbing right looking all miserable and sad please brother help me what can i do now to make myself feel better spiritually dead and empty I can give you so many footballers. After retiring, their lives spiraled out of control. Adriano, Francesco Totti, right? Some of the elders, they know him. Tony Adams. A lot of them, they really badly struggle. The moment they retire, what do I do next? I've got all of this money. So then they turn to drugs. They turn to drinking. They turn to these distractions in order to make themselves feel better. To be spiritually content, to be fulfilled and satisfied. And this is not something that money can buy. I send these little clips to my little brother all the time, Ibrahim. Whenever there's a celebrity like Logan Paul, KSI, right? All of these guys that we might look up to, them talking about their own lives, right? What you see on the screen is different to what happens behind closed doors. 
I sent it to Ibrahim. I was like, here, Ibrahim, what do you think? Right? What do you think? Are you guys with me? I said, subhanAllah, man, they're living double lives. I have a sister-in-law that's not, that's not Muslim, right? When my wife gave birth, she came. I was in Egypt at the time. She came over. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity. Huh? She came over. I said to her, you work as a nurse for long hours. What do you do when you come home? Guess what she said? I have to watch a Netflix series. Otherwise, and she did this with a hand. I'm going to go crazy. Wallahi al she said that. Right. This is how it is, my brothers and my sisters. Nothing can give you that fulfillment, that contentment, right? Except knowing who Allah is. The way your heart has been created, it craves for its creator. It wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters. They kill and they fight over what? You guys heard our brother Naveed. I hope you guys understood his accent, huh? He's from Birmingham, right? I hope you guys understood his accent. Some of the lyrics will lie. It's very, very powerful. What are you fighting over? What are you running after? Right? To see your parents miserable. Over what, guys? What are people killing each other for? Just earlier I was sent an article... Someone got shot. Over what? Right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, لَيَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ الزَّمَانٌ لَا يَدْرِي الْقَاتِلْ فِيمَا قَتَلْ وَلَا يَدْرِي الْمَخْتُولِ فِيمَا قُتِلْ He kills, he doesn't know why he's killing. And he's killed, the one who was killed, he doesn't know why he's been killed. Right? I've said this before, I'll say it again, my brothers and my sisters, right? You guys seen the Kaaba? We take drug dealers to the Kaaba on a regular basis. We take drug dealers to the Kaaba. Wallahi. Upon seeing the Kaaba, these guys, they break down into tears. I'm sure we saw that video of DJ Khalid, right? He went to the Kaaba. This is a man who is involved in what? Music, Layla and Haran. Day and night. But when he saw the Kaaba, he broke down into tears. In his ihram. Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "La hadmu al Kaabati hajran hajra." You know, destroying the Kaaba. Would anyone think about punching the Kaaba or smacking into it? Mess the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you destroy the Kaaba, you demolish it, and then you take each part and take it out of the out, out of the Haram, get rid of it like that. This is less of a problem in the eyes of Allah than you taking a Muslim's life. Two of the Muslims, they come together and they've got knives and guns. Both of them are in the hellfire. The one who killed and the one who was killed. Companions are oh, saying, we understand the one who killed. What about the one who was killed? Right? He was extremely eager in taking the life of his brother as well. Agreed? He wanted to do the exact same thing except that the killer got there first. Sahih? Over what are they fighting over? Nothing more than this delusion, than this beautiful lie that will always leave you disappointed. Just as those who came before you. The dunya beautified itself. Come get me. Once you acquire the house, once you acquire that girl, once you acquire that car, you think you're going to happen now? Wallah, you won't. It only lasts a little bit and then you're back to square one again. You are back to square one again. The next thing and the next thing and the next thing. As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, Ibn Adam, you give him one mountain of gold, it's not enough. What's the second? Third, never enough. The only thing that's going to fill him up if you get the soil and shove it down his throat. And then the shaitan now coming from Right, what does that mean? I'm going to give them doubts about their religion. The devil is out there to do this, my brothers, to strip you of your faith. Right? 
that brings me on to the three points that are the root causes for deviation. Perhaps maybe in today's day and age, based on what I've observed. Right? The first one is due to none other than what? Al-Jahl, ignorance. Would you guys agree, my brothers and my sisters? Right? Our sisters are becoming feminists. The way we are, we want to maybe combine between being liberal and also at the same time a Muslim. Thinking what, that these are two things that go hand in hand with one another. Liberal values, go live as you wish. Live and let be as they say. Right? Do as you choose. Huh? Do as you choose. Right? you got kids identifying as cats. Right. Pierce Morgan came out the other day on Twitter and he wrote, from today I identify as a cat. From the fruits of liberalism, guys, do as you wish. Where do you draw the line? Right? Let me ask you guys a question. And excuse me, my uncles and my elders, if I mention some of these examples that go against al Am, that makes us maybe feel a little bit uncomfortable. Right? We are facing at this moment in time what we've maybe never faced before. Very different to back home. Right? Our kids' minds are being polluted. Their intellects are being hijacked. Let me ask you guys a question. Just to show you the fruits of liberalism, right? Live and let be. Let everyone do as they wish, Akhi. Don't say anything. If she wants to go outside like that, let her do so. Now you have kids identifying as cats and dogs. Right. Well, I remember a couple of Eids ago we was at the Eid table me and some of my cousins I said to him I said to him Siraj this is happening he failed to believe me right that you could actually now start identifying as an animal let me answer this question what do you think of one having a relationship with a sister? Ah, huh. any issues? Huh? Our brother said haram, but love is love, though, right? What's the what's the issue? One having a relationship with an animal. What do you guys think? Morally acceptable or morally unacceptable? But love is love, guys. Just like water is water, go drink from the toilet then, right? Sah, this is the argument that we have at this moment in time pertaining to what has become so prevalent. Love is love. Right? Love is love. Say, why can't a brother and a sister love one another and have a relationship? Love is love. Walala. It's as simple as that. Where do you draw the line? Right? You want to stop maybe your relatives from doing haram. Your female folk, you advise them. No, I want you maybe to dress according to what Allah said. Someone else comes along and says, No, Akhi, leave her. Don't get involved. If she wants to go outside without hijab, live and let be. Liberal values. Where do you draw the line? Of what you can do and what you can't do. The child will come home and say, Dad, right? I can do whatever I want. We haven't instilled with him what Al-Islam is or how we structure and live our lives. Right? Where do you draw the line? A kid now is able to choose his own pronouns. But if you ask, can he drive a car? No, he can't. Sorry? Why can't he drive a car? Seven year old, let him drive a car. Right? Don't say anything to your female flock. Don't say anything to your children. This is what liberalism wants from us. And you think, my brothers and my sisters, that it's in our own best interest? You really think that? When you say something bad about Islam, fine, freedom of speech. You say something about a flag, it's a criminal offense. You can say anything you want about Islam or Muslimin, but you say anything about another religion, and Semitic. By the way, I'm not endorsing this. I'm just trying to show you guys the discrepancies and the holes in the narrative. 
We think that these values are in our own best interest. We are gravely mistaken. So where do you draw the line now with your female folk? She wants to go outside without the hijab. This guy is saying, Aki, don't get involved. Khaliha. Taib, can she also take off her top? Can she walk around naked outside? This is what he said, right? Don't get involved. So if a woman wants to do that tomorrow, Aishan Mushkila, what's the problem? Where do you draw the line? Right? This is liberalism in a nutshell for you, my brothers and my sisters. Us not realizing exactly the full extent of that. A sister, because of ignorance, joins the feminist team, thinking that my girlies are going to give me my rights. Islam doesn't. How many a time have we seen a sister? She starts university. Right? She starts university and she's holding on to Islamic morals and values. She runs into sisters that might also be wearing hijab, but they've been polluted. You as a father don't know exactly what's going on. So she comes home, she's still maybe wearing a hijab, right? And she has the Islamic dress code, but wallahi al that which is coming out of her mouth is flirtation with kufr. And I'll tell you guys why. She's been convinced that everything is what? Equal rights. She has to look through the lens of equal rights and then she comes to the Quran. Certain verses, like inheritance. Akhi, this is wrong. This is not right. This is oppressive. Agreed? Now you're saying that Allah's laws are oppressive. Look how dangerous that is, guys. On the fringe of the deen. Because of what she's coming out with. You have major sins in the religion. It doesn't take you out of Islam. If one does dinner, does it take them out of Islam, guys? No, it doesn't. However, if you start denying aspects of our deen, right? Oh, Allah is oppressive. She might not say Allah, but this is oppressive. This verse here shouldn't be there. Akhi, this is a hundred times worse than zina. Walala. Am I wrong to say that? Why are you guys looking at me as if? There are major sins in our deen and there's another aspect which is what to deny aspects of the deen. And that's so scary. So, so scary. Right? I was telling the university students, right? We as the generation, it's a transitional generation. Meaning we've seen before and after. صح? Once upon a time you guys would laugh at if a guy was walking funny. Huh? You'd call him all sorts of names. Three letter word. You'd call him that. You think you can do that now? Right? We've seen what happened before and what's happening after. Our kids, my brothers and my sisters, they are not going to see or witness what happened before. They're just going to wake up to a very colorful world. Again, let me ask you another question. Carrying out, right? And this is not my... Uh, Abu Taymi doesn't have any views, huh? I'm just asking you guys. Carrying out this practice or thinking there's nothing wrong with it, which one's worse? The first or the last or the second? But this guy is actually doing it. Huh? He's doing the same, you know? He's doing it. Is that not worse than thinking there's nothing wrong with it? My brothers and my sisters, I speak to people who are doing it and they say to me, Wallahi, on the phone, I know what I'm doing is wrong. Please make dua for me. He knows it's wrong, but he's still doing it. But what I fear for our kids is, they come up next time, right? Next generation, they will start legitimizing it. Because all they hear is what? All they hear is what? That this is fine. And anyone who says other than that, he will be called a bigot. He will be labeled straight away. Sah? And this is akhtar bi kathir. It is so much more dangerous. Go and ask any Islamic scholar you want. Which one is worse, this or that? Right. Or maybe thinking that it's allowed or it's halal. When Allah Azza wa clearly said other than that in the Quran. Right? Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi, he tells us, I'lam, no. أن أول تلبيس إبليس على الناس صدهم عن العلم 
The first deception of Iblis is what? To block the people away from knowledge. Why? لِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ Ilm is the light that will help one navigate and maneuver around what? The tricks and the traps of the devil. You think shaitan wants us to be sitting here delivering this class on the importance of knowledge? Think he really wants that? Abadan la. This is the first deception of Iblis. And then it says, فَإِذَا أَطْفَأَ مَصَابِيحَهُمْ خَبَّطَهُمْ فِي الظِّلَامِ كَيْفَ شَاءَ Once he manages now to extinguish this light, you will see yourself tripping over left, right and center. Imagine now we switched off the light. It's dark. There are no torches. There are no lights. How would you feel, guys? You'd be tripping over. Just like you would trip over if you're inside of a forest with no light. He's saying to us, ilm is like that. Right? Now which we see happening, whether it is with our kids, whether it is with our female folk, when they go to these universities, there are breeding grounds, right? For kufr, shirk, feminism, liberalism, isms and schisms, everything you think of. The doubts. You go to philosophy class, that professor does not care whether you're a Muslim or you're a Jew or you are a Christian. He doesn't care. He just wants to strip you of your faith and make you ladini without a religion. Right? And then we see ourselves falling victim to these doubts. We are shaken to the core. My brothers and my sisters, take this from me and I hope you write it down. Right? Just because we don't have the answers, that doesn't mean there aren't any answers. Just because we don't have any answers, doesn't mean there aren't any answers. Sounds like something that you put on Twitter, right? Make sure you tag me, huh? Just joking, guys. Shahid min al kalam, right? Doubts after doubts. And the only way we'll be able to repel it is through what? Al ilm al nafi'. Ibn al Jawzi also says, and by the way, this is a wonderful book. It's called Tilbis Iblis. The Deception of Iblis. And I think it's been translated into English as well. It says, Al Babul A'lam. Al Yatkhulu Minhu Iblis Al Nas Hu Al Jahl. The greatest gate that the shaitan creeps through to mankind is none other than ignorance. Right? He will get through to the ignorant very, very easily. As for the knowledgeable individual, right? He comes to him like a thief. You know, pickpocket? The pickpocket, he comes and he hides and he has all these tricks. And then what steps are like that? Your ignorant is going to come to you directly and have a field day. So easy. Depending on how much knowledge you have, he's further away from you and your community. The less knowledgeable you are, my brothers and my sisters, right, he'll be able to overpower everyone there. Right? So the first is what, my brothers and my sisters? What was the first? Huh. Ignorance from the root causes of deviation and misguidance. And the enemies of Islam, right? As Allah told us, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يَشْتَرُونَ الضَّلَالَةِ Haven't you seen the people of the book? Allah tells us. Who are the people of the book? Sant. He's anti-Semitic, not me. Right. Allah tells us, haven't you not seen those who are given knowledge of the book? They had knowledge. What do they do? They spend with their wealth to mislead every single one of us. They want you to go far, far astray. Huh? Far, far astray. If Allah is telling us this about the people of the book who had knowledge, then how about anyone else? I said this. I hope, I'm hoping somebody can help me out here. Right? The Rainbow Team. How much do you think they spent in 2021 in America? Is it in its thousands? Is it in its millions? Or in its billions? Trillions. Good. 
1.4 trillion to make the world a very colorful place. Trillions in 2021 in America. That's how much they're spending in order to mislead every single one of us. I, that brings me on to the second point. I've only got a little bit left, Alicia. Second point, guys. Lack of propagation. Lack of propagation, meaning not propagating the religion enough. My brothers and my sisters, would you agree? The reason why, right? So many of the people that we know, they are now struggling to deal with what was maybe one day min al musallamat. You know, there was, there was a time when certain things were non negotiable. You wouldn't even ask about its hukum, about its ruling. You wouldn't even ask about it. Sah? However, today, it's up for discussion, right? It is up for discussion. Things that were so clear, it is up for discussion. Let me ask you guys a question. Imagine now we all stood up and we started singing the national anthem here inside of the masjid. What do you guys think? Huh? What do you guys think? National anthem inside of the masjid. Okay? Right. Was this even something that would be considered or discussed back in the day? Guess why in the UK it actually happened? Not inside of the prayer hall, but maybe one of those big halls upstairs, and which is of course inside of the masjid. And the Imam standing there with khushur. Right. There was an uproar. Conservative Muslims they went crazy. But it happened in one of the biggest masjids in the UK. You had kids coming out when the queen passed away. And by the way, I'm not inciting violence towards the monarchy. Kids, they were being interviewed. It's on the BBC. You guys know the BBC? They came out and they said, oh, the queen deserves to be in Jannah. Wallahi al-Azim, I'm just quoting guys. Uqsimu billahi al-Azim, these are Muslim kids. How did this come about? Right? A brother was a graduate from Al Medina. We were talking and he was like angry. He was like, you know, letting off. And, and he's ripping into that Imam and ripping into this Islamic school that brought them to the masjid. I said to him, Akhi, look, is it only them to blame or do we have a role to play in this? How many from amongst us are actually speaking about these issues that are so pressing and important? How many from us? And he went silent. He went silent. I said, how many of us are actually discussing it openly? Or are we terrified? I said to him, go grab a solicitor. Go ask him everything that you need to ask him about what you can say and what you can't. I was in touch with the solicitors for a whole year. A whole year before I started speaking out. I did 27 secular universities. Not Islamic, secular. And you can imagine. We had the blue haired feminists and the rainbow team tried to shut down these programs, but they fell flat on their faces. And I'm still standing. Am I underground, guys? Am I wrapped up and chained up? And I. Lack of propagation of the deen. Let me ask you guys another question. I, maybe this is food for thought. I actually commend, right, the rainbow team for this. Wallahi al-Azim. That what they've managed to achieve is nothing less than amazing. I'll tell you guys before you cancel me, huh? Wait. Them, in comparison to everyone else, is what? They are a minority. A raindrop in the sea. Sah? A raindrop. But they come across as the majority. The loudest, Sahih. How is that? Right? How is that, guys? We just came out of huh? Pride Month. How many volunteers do you think they had? 
hundreds and thousands, guys. They are proud. And I commend them for this aspect. What do I mean by that? That they don't shy away, no hesitation. They stand up for what they love and believe. Now put that into perspective with us. Us Muslims, guys. Right? Because we are not, I'm talking about just teaching, preaching. Hmm? What is correct? I'm not saying to you, go and say, I believe. I, no, 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 no. We don't want to know what you believe. Just say the Quran says. Our kids, we're not telling them what they need to believe. Right? And they are. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, sulh al-Hudaybiyyah. He was angry with the treaties that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam signed. But the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was weighing between the pros and the cons. Umar al-Khattab came and said, Alasna ala al-haqqi wa hum ala al-batil. Are we not upon the truth and they are upon falsehood? Umar was saying this about the mushrikeen. Alasna ala al-haqqi wa hum ala al-batil. أَلَيْثَ قَتْلَانَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَقَتْلَانَ فِي النَّارِ On those who passed away from us in the Jannah and theirs are in the hellfire. Read between the lines, guys. Are we not upon the truth? وَهُمْ عَلَى الْبَاطِلَ And they are upon falsehood. But fear-mongering tactics have been used to shut us down. And even something that is so basic, you are asked, you, you, you are asked about what is your gender you think thrice. What should I say? What shall I say? We, it reached that point that when we asked about our own gender, wait, what? Ya jama'ah, ila hadi daraja. And that brings me now, my brothers and my sisters, to point number three. A lot of time why we might give in to some of these deviances and misguided practices, and I'm specifically talking about modern day ideologies, it all boils down to what? A lack of Tawheed. A lack of understanding of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Why is it that we fail to understand that our intellects are limited? Sometimes we try to use our intellect over what Allah Azza wa Jalla said. Sah? This doesn't make sense to me. Right? Allahi, feminist values, it tends to make a lot more sense. Right? She comes across a hadith, or he comes across a verse or a hadith, Wallahi, it doesn't fall in line with my intellect. It doesn't make sense. Can anyone smell what Wendy's is cooking? Was that Wendy's? I think I saw Wendy's. The Wendy's here. Sorry, Burger King. That was haram anyway. Eh? Huh? Burger King, can anyone smell? Can anyone smell that which is being sold in Burger King? Can you guys smell it? Why are you guys saying yes? Huh? Can anyone smell it? No, you can't. Can anyone hear that which is happening outside? Can anyone see that which is happening outside? Why is it that we fail to understand Right, that our intellects are limited as well. All these body parts are limited. Your intellect is limited as well. And by the way, now that we mentioned Burger King, right? I went to Australia. There's a strip in Sydney where everything is halal, even McDonald's. They converted the McDonald's, right? It's literally filled with Lebanese, the whole strip. And there was even a time they boycotted McDonald's and McDonald's started, please... And they ended up changing the whole food system there. Anyways, Shahid min al-Kalam. That is because they all collectively came together. Just like this team comes together, propagating that which they... Mm. Anyways, going back to the issue of Tawheed, my brothers and my sisters. Understanding who Allah Azza wa Jal is. Who is Allah? Today our kids, we tell them, memorize Quran. And they'll memorize the Quran like water. But then, what does this Quran even say? Right? We tell them, pray. Tayyip, he has no understanding of who he's praying to. It's become more like a what? A chore. A routine. Yeah, my dad told me to pray in it. Pray. 
He doesn't know who he's praying to or who Allah Azza wa Jal is. He hasn't internalized who he's actually prostrating to, my brothers and my sisters. So it's so much more easier later on down the line when he grows a little bit earlier, right? Hey man, just can't be bothered in it. Sah? As opposed to if you learn. And our only source of knowledge that we have of Allah is what? He said, Quran and Sunnah. What's inside of the Quran and the Sunnah? Allah's names and His attributes. Who is a Sami'ah? Who is Al Basir? Who is Al Raqib? Right? What are these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me give you guys an example. My brother's master, Ibn Rajab, he mentions this in one of his books, right? That one time in the desert, there was a male and female Bedouin. Male and female Bedouin. And the male Bedouin began to seduce her. What do you guys call it? Riz, Riz. <laughs> I learned this word when I came to Canada. Huh? He began to seduce her. And then he realized that she started getting a little bit scared. He said to her, Mimma What are you scared of? La yarana illa al kawakib. The only thing that can see us are the kawakib, are the stars. She looked at him and she said, who, where is the one that created these stars? Where is the creator of these stars? Right? This is what she said to him. She is the lady, my brothers and my sisters, that understood who Allah is. She internalized the names of Allah. Allah watching over me. Today, my brothers and sisters, we might say to our children, don't do this. Oh, then he does end up doing it. He ends up watching haram. Oh, my mom's not looking. Right? Forget about kids, elders, on Facebook, youngsters, on Finagram. Right? Under the blanket, nobody can see me. Allah Azza wa Jal can see you. Every move that we take, right? Every step that we make, my brothers and my sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal is watching me. Right? Who from amongst the things like that, Ya Jama'at al Khairat? This is a lady that internalized these names, hence why she responded like that. As opposed to maybe when someone else slips into your DMs? Huh? And then the shaitan is whispering, Go give a da'wah. Sah. No one is watching anyway. Let me just go do that haram. Sah. Look at this lady, guys. She was a female Bedouin. The Bedouins tend to be very different in the way they operate compared to everyone else that grew up in a city. Sah. But she knew who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was. Hence why she responded like that. Are you guys with me? And the examples are many. Put your hand up if you're at the university. Put your hand up if you came to the university today. Taib. Put your hand up if you came to any of the other lectures. MashaAllah. You know, one thing I'm really shocked about is I've been asking this question at all of the masajid that I went to. I thought maybe everyone was following me around. But every masjid, subhanAllah, is like their own people. And in every masjid, they're filling it up. The community is filling up the masjid. Wallahi, there's a lot of goodness in the Canadian people. It really is. All right. May Allah Azza wa bless you all. I'm going to mention a story that I mentioned to the university students as well. I'll mention it here again. Just to show you how a tawheed, learning who Allah is, the rights that Allah Azza wa has over you. All right. How much goodness it can bring you, and then we're going to stop, inshallah ta'ala, as it's Isha time. Have you guys heard of Umar ibn Khattab? Household name, everybody knows him. 
Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu as he would do every night patrolling the streets of Medina with his workers right. and then they got tired so he began to lean on one of the houses of course the houses back then wasn't like Canadian houses today the walls were very thin and you could hear the conversations that were taking place as he's leaning on there he begins to hear a conversation taking place between a mother and a daughter The mother says to the daughter, go and mix milk with water. The daughter says, oh mother, in a very gentle, nice way. Haven't you had, right, the new law that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu passed today? She says, what is it? That you can't mix water with milk. Why would you mix water with milk? To make more money out of it when selling it on. So she basically wanted to cheat the people, right? She said to her, Ya Bunayati, O daughter, stand up and mix the water with milk. She said to her, O mother, how can I obey Umar in public and then behind closed doors I disobey him? Before I continue with the story, I'm going to tell you guys something that Umar uh, that Ibn Qayyim mentioned. He said, Tawheed it opens the door of happiness and the door of goodness for the people now take this as an example look how this impacted this young lady's life because of her knowing who Allah is are you guys with me she said oh mother right if Umar ibn Khattab can't see me then indeed Allah Azzawajal can see me Allah she said to her, initially, Umar can't see you. She said, إِنْ كَانَ لَا يَرَانِي عُمَرْ فَإِنَّ رَبَّ عُمَرَ يَرَانِي Allah. If Umar can't see me, then indeed the Lord of Umar al-Khattab can see me. What happened after that, my brothers, my sisters? What do you think Umar done? You think he dragged the mother out of the house? Huh? All the way to the courts. Let me, let me fail هذا. Right. He went home next morning, he lined up his children and he said to them, who wants to get married? Isam said, I did. Isam got married to her. What did I mention earlier? Tawheed, he opens the door of goodness and what else? Happiness. You tell me she never got happy when she got married? Her being at home, just being righteous, doing the right thing. Sometimes our sisters may think that I have to go and display myself. Like that sister that came up to us in Montreal. I asked some questions to the brothers, right, who come from similar backgrounds. And they said sometimes the dad and the mother, they tell the daughter, don't wear hijab, so everyone can see how beautiful you are and it can increase your chances of marriage. Or go and display yourself online, Adi. He must see me, otherwise, how is he going to find me? Huh? How is he going to find you? How did he end up finding her? Tawheed opens the door of happiness, my brothers and my sisters. She got married, they gave birth to a daughter called huh? Layla. Layla then got married, and then they ended up giving birth to who? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Who was Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? Even though he was the eighth caliphate after the Prophet Sallallahu and passed away, right? Today when they speak about the four khulafa, who are the four? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. They would mention Umar ibn Abdul Aziz alongside these great four rightly guided caliphates, the ones that we've been told to follow and take their understanding. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatil khulafa rashidin al mahdiin hold on to their way with your molar teeth it's their understanding that we take right are you guys with me Umar al Aziz is mentioned from Allah amongst these four and it all started with a lady being righteous behind closed doors doing the right thing she learned who Allah is and she internalized it the amount of doors that Allah will open up for you my brothers and my sisters 
So what were the three? Let's recap. We have 40 seconds. What was number one? Ignorance. What was number two? Huh? Lack of propagation of what is right. If you don't call to what is right, the opposite will be embraced. And don't be surprised. We had feminism, right? We had feminism. It took a stronghold. Why did it take a stronghold? Because we stopped propagating that which is correct. Then we ended up getting what? The red pill. Another group that propagates garbage. Sah? But Islam is a solution to all of it. But people don't know Islam because it doesn't get propagated enough. What was number three? Lack of tawheed. So the solution is what? Ilm? Second one is what? A da'wah to call to that which is correct. And number three is to learn our religion. To learn about who Allah Azza wa Jal is. We respect people based on what we know about them. But we don't respect Allah. We don't feel that love. Why? Because we don't know anything about them. We don't know nothing about Allah. So how do you expect to love Allah? How do you expect to have that connection with Him? It's from the most common questions that people tend to ask. Why I don't feel a connection? Because we don't know anything about it. We'll stop there inshallah ta'ala. I went over by 30 seconds. I hope that's not a problem inshallah ta'ala. Again, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart to the administration, to our elders who facilitated this for us. We have to appreciate their works. Right? I hope inshallah ta'ala the masjid continues to conduct these classes and these programs because this is what the shabab need. Otherwise, there's enough places they could go to. Jazakumullahu khayran wa barakallahu feekum wa ahsanallahu ilaykum.